Hi, this is Kaushik Loud. Thank you to Dr. Volha Rudkovskaya for inviting me to speak with you guys. Today I want to talk about ethical growth. I want to first focus on the first law of thermodynamics. Energy in a system is always constant. It cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be converted from one form to another. This point will have significance later on. Economic growth. Meet a demand with a product or a service and make money and achieve growth. But as the French philosopher Honor de Balzac said, behind every great fortune there is an equally great crime. The robber barons of the US, Cornelius Vanderbilt, Andrew Carnegie of Carnegie Hall, John D. Rockefeller of the Rockefeller Center Christmas Tree of New York, these guys didn't exactly follow ethics to build their empires. Fraudulent endeavors are all around us. If it is too good to be true, it probably is not. For some people, making money is not as much about creating a valuable product or service, but just to convince their investors that they have created one. One very good example of that would be Miss Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos. Right now, she is a study for psychologists. How to modulate voice, change body language to convince investors to invest in a rapid blood test uh, which never even existed. Right now she is under trial. The other example would be the way the real estate boom fueled the Chinese economy. Projections were made to investors in the West that uh, the burgeoning middle class of China needed housing. It didn't matter if the housing was unaffordable by almost most of the Chinese uh, people in the cities. But investments came pouring in. The buildings were poorly constructed because they just needed to show that the buildings were being constructed. The iron rebars used in the buildings could be broken with your fingers. The facades fell off in a gust of wind. They could not survive the rains. Buildings, bridges, everything collapsed. Shengzhou city spent $8.25 billion over five years on construction, which had no result. The video link is over there. The Chinese affectionately call it the tofu drag constructions. The other example would be the bicycle rentals. Okay, so bicycle companies raised $130 million in the initial IPO. And then they had no infrastructure for the, 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 the users to park their bicycles efficiently. Near the train stations, there were mountains of four or five story high of bicycles stacked on top of each other, rotting and rusting in the rain. Right now, there are bicycle graveyards. But what did these companies do? They went to the investors and said, we used up all the bicycles. We need more. They kept on getting more money till the companies imploded. Because he thought it was good sport because some men aren't looking for anything logical like money they can't be bought bullied reasoned or negotiated with some men just want to watch the world burn that is true some men actually just want to watch the world burn and the best example would be the oil and gas companies there's this movie if, if you guys have time just check it out. Who killed the electric car? How car companies went and repurchased electric cars from families so that everyone would be using oil, gasoline-powered vehicles. It's a fascinating story. We have oil spills. We're polluting the atmosphere, destroying our bodies with like you know, pollutants in our lungs, asthma, and all these kinds of lung cancer, everything else. But hey, these oil and gas companies are making billions, right? The other example would be the fake milk scandals coming out of China, using melamin to boost to show that the milk actually has protein in it, even though it's a poison. Thousands of babies are killed. Doesn't matter. <coughs> Executives are put on trial. Six months later, the trial ends. The execs are released. They go back to starting the same company. Is this justice? If you look at the Wuhan virus economic trajectories, Wealth flowed from the middle class and the poor families to the billionaires. People died during the lockdown as many daily wage earners couldn't support their own families. So do you think it is fair to think that the first law of thermodynamics that we discussed before was at play here? There was an energy conversion. The life energy of the poor and destitute was converted into currency to increase the bank balances for the billionaires and oligarchs. For what? For this, <coughs> a banana in a duct tape for one twenty thousand dollars. Maurizio Catalan, artist. 
The beauty of something well made and made with thought and passion stands the test of time. The difference between something good and something great is the attention to detail, as Mr. Swindle says. Let us take a look at the Bugatti cars, 1930s, made with such painstaking love. The engine blocks were hand scraped so flat they didn't need gaskets. To this day, Bugatti cars are treasured. Let us take a look at Jonas Salk and the polio vaccine. He didn't patent his vaccine. He wanted to help the world, the children. In comparison, let's look at Pfizer, <coughs> which wanted military bases and embassies from Brazil and Argentina in exchange for the vaccine. Why? Let us look at these broken potteries from Japan, ancient heirloom pieces. When they are broken by the ancient art of Kintsugi, they are fixed with gold, making it even more beautiful. This is called passion. This is called love, the attention to detail which sets things apart. But in our times, things have changed. Where knowledge, internet, social media was supposed to basically improve the world, we have misinformation, fake news, and essentially the current time can be captured by these two movies, Idiocracy, a cult classic, and Don't Look Up. Ignore what is coming at you. Be lost in your own world of indulgence. What are we doing? We're standing at the precipice of destruction. On the top left corner, you see the Doomsday Glacier, the Thwaite Glacier. If that melts, that is the Keystone Glacier, the other glaciers melt, the sea levels rise, Amsterdam, New York, Mumbai, Los Angeles, they will be lost to the ocean. Countries like Netherlands, Bangladesh, Maldives will be submerged. Billions of people will die. What are, what are we doing with our air? We have micropollutants in our lungs, asthma, lung cancer, so many breathing disorders. They just recently discovered microplastics in people's lungs. The number of heart diseases have grown. The cases have grown exponentially. This is the largest cause of death in the world today. Because advertisement tells people it is cool to eat awful meat and poor nutrition, high calorie food from fast food giants. And one point which really strikes close is the advent of autistic <coughs> spectrum disorder. In the 1970s, there was 1 in 18,000 children who was autistic. In, nine, in 2018, that number has increased to 1 in 32. My own son is autistic. Why, we don't know. But we can guess. Monsanto's roundup, fracking, destroying the groundwater, air pollution. What are the food that we eat, GMO? What are we doing to our own world? There's a basic tenet of Hinduism. We have borrowed the world from our children and we must leave it better than we found it. Every micro, plant, insect, animal and human has a right to survive on this planet, thrive and spread its genes. <coughs> Every single creature has a purpose and need in the grand scheme of things. In the Soviet Union in the 50s, they decided that the mosquitoes were a big problem. They flooded the waterways with insecticide. Yes, in the summer there were no mosquitoes, but guess what? There were no fish either. We are in a symbiotic ecosystem. One without the other cannot survive, and we have to understand that. And we have to endeavor to make the world a better place. Look at this scientist from Michigan State University holding up a glass of solar panel, <coughs> transparent solar panel. It will change the world. The beautiful buoys for generating wave energy, electricity out of waves. And something that I'm personally associated with medical devices. I've worked with cardiac pacemakers. Imagine controlling the rhythm of the heart with leads and electrical signals. I made the transition from defense to medical technology. And believe me, it was so much better for my soul. From an industry which was spending $14,000 on toilet seat covers and $9.99 on pliers to making products for saving babies and adults improving the quality of their lives, seeing the happiness in their families. I sleep better. It gives me an unparalleled sense of accomplishment. And believe me, as Mark Twain said, find a job that you enjoy doing and you will never have to work a day in your life. You guys are the future of the world. What you decide to do 
will shape the world and take it forward. Whenever you make a decision, I want you guys to stop and think, will this bring peace of mind to you? Will it make it a better place for you and your kids? Will everyone be able to grow together and live better? That's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. This is Kaushik Loth. And by the way, that's my kid, my brilliant autistic son, Thor. Adios.